recording. Good evening. Welcome to Art 244 on a Monday night. I'm going to open up the chat. Okay. All right. Thanks for checking in, Christian. If your phone and internet aren't going to last, we will We'll see you when we see you. Um, Christian has actually taken the class before, and he is a very prolific um, sculptor. And so he's going to be just working on things, I think mostly small things, because he kind of likes his sculptures on the small side, unless he's going to now make a liar out of me by making some big, wonderful sculpture for this process. I don't need the sculptures to be big. That's why I thought I would try to blast out something that is small. So this is my, the, the size of my hand, you know, is, is this big. The hand is about five or six inches long generally. And so I've got my kind of eight inch figure here um, bent into a pretzel pose. So it's only about four inches tall. And it's about six inches long from this extended hand out here to this extended knee over here very compact sculpture and because I'm dealing with fairly linear forms um, and not really big volumes here this is going to be a relatively cheap sculpture to cast I mean this is really going to be you know a ten dollar sculpture or less um, because there's not going to be more than a pound and a half or two pounds of metal here I mean maybe maybe this is going to be a two pound piece and it might be 16 bucks but it's eight dollars a pound for the bronze and so sometimes we have to measure our ego by how much bronze we can afford and how much that cuts into our beer budget um everybody's beer budget is different and in fact your beer budget throughout your whole life will change dramatically mine is very small right now i've got a very small beer budget right now i don't drink beer anymore it was um, you know, one of those things that you're really proud of when you are young and of German descent and all of that. Oh, beer, that's a, that's a thing. But um, I just about can't stand it anymore in terms of the calories, the alcohol, and the, the sugars, because they really do a number on my pancreas. But anyway. All right, let's see. I'm gonna just check and see who's all here today because I've got my list over here. And so we're checking everybody. Let's see who's all here. This goes there. I wanna let you guys know a little housekeeping announcement for the class before we really get started. You guys have already gotten started. I have made up these bottles of, um, paint thinner. Um, I've, I'm holding one right up right now. In fact, I'm putting it right here on the table so that you can see it next to other things. These are three ounce bottles that I got from Walmart. Um, they're 97 cents a piece because everything at Walmart is 97 cents a piece. Um, I do want these back, but I tried to make up, you know, an ounce or two of uh, paint thinner in here for anybody who actually wanted to get a little bit of paint thinner for smoothing out their sculpture toward the end of your sculpting process. So I've got these out on the table and I put them out on the table every day and I bring them in off the table every night and they're still available for the next week or two for anybody who would like to have um, a little bottle of paint thinner to apply just a little bit of paint thinner to your sculpture to smooth it out. And so on a sculpture like this, I'm going to be uh, probably applying and smoothing things out once I get this thing finished. I still have to do a hairstyle on this thing. Um, I still have to really do a bunch of refinement for my forms um, of the sculpture. So I'm not ready yet. So, but I do have 10 of these bottles made up for the class. And I think one person picked one up. So I've got, I've still got about nine bottles uh, available for you guys to use in case you want one. So I'll keep I, the table uh, outside the west door of Eden Hall here is the way that I communicate with everybody. I, if I've got a handout to go out for one of my classes or whatever, it goes out there with a rock on top. And uh, for you guys, I've got the paint thinner. And oh, I've also got those tiny 
not tiny, but small electric soldering irons. I found a bunch of them here in the art department. So I had five and somebody picked one up last week. So that's good. Still got four left if you want a little electric soldering iron to use for welding wax pieces together. Um, otherwise, I will definitely be welding your stuff together. You're falling apart stuff together. Oh, Kylie, thank you. Okay, you grabbed yours this afternoon. Um, welding stuff together. Um, if it's falling apart, I'm going to check all the joints on everything. And if anything is loose, I'll be um, applying a little hot knife to it to uh, weld things together. And I'll even nice it up a little bit during my... Um, my gating process that I will apply to each piece. So there will be that. Okay, but of course I talk too much because I gotta pull the chat thing down so I can see more of you guys. So that I can see PC right there at the bottom of the list. Hey, and Kylie is right there. And Cameron, Mr. Standing. Okay, Hunter. Page two, okay. And other hunter, sorry. But when I go from the bottom of the list, your other hunter and Emily. Okay, okay, Casper is there. And Audrey is right there, okay. Yes, okay. Gosh, that's a lot of people, that's eight people. That's a lot of good people. Okay. Um, another um, housekeeping announcement for this evening. If you are a sophomore um, and getting near graduation, and uh, we have to do a graduation um, application, graduation apps are due this week um, at, at the end of the week on Friday. So I have gone through a couple of grad apps with people. Um, and sign up, sign them off so that they can be taken over to student first up so that you can apply for graduation. Um, if you are one of my advisees and need to do a graduation app, um, they are available at my Laker link for a download. Um, they're also available at the student first stop if you happen to be on campus. But the grad app just wants you to tell them whether you're going to uh, participate in graduation this spring. Um, we're planning on having a graduation. So, uh, you know, just letting you know, um, you know, whether you want your information shared with your local newspaper, they want to know how your name is supposed to be spelled and pronounced. And then if you've got any classes that need to be finished up for your degree, they want you to put the, your plan for how you're going to get those last five or six classes done next quarter and maybe beyond. And you can graduate, even though you may have up to like 10 credits not finished, um, you can still go ahead and participate in graduation and then continue taking the classes and getting the credits, you know, in the summertime or next year. And as soon as you have all the credits earned, um, your degree will be conferred to you. If you are in the AAOT program and you are going to transfer to a college or university for your program, um, all you have to do is just take you know, a semester's worth of classes there and transfer back here the, the credits that you need to graduate. And we will, we will take those credits and apply them to your degree and then go ahead and confer the degree to you. So um, graduation applications are due this week. All right. And everybody else is pretty much here, which is good. Christopher is here in the house now. Okay. Fantastic. So, got that going on. All right. So, I've got my little tiny camera on a, um, uh, what do you call this, tripod thing right next to me here. And I'm bringing it in from the side, hopefully so that you can see the sculpture and not my big fat belly quite so much as I'm working on the sculpture. So, um, this foot is not in the right place. You might like that foot. You might think that's a very fine foot. I'm not digging it very much. I also see right now that it is too long. So I'm going to cut that foot down just a bit and try to bring that the size of that foot into better proportion with the leg that it's attached to. 
and pretty much the other foot. Um, that's better. Okay. And now I wanted to move this foot and leg back to where it was tucking underneath the thigh a lot closer up to the crotch. And so all of that has to move in that direction. And I'm screwing everything up. So eventually I'm going to have to re-weld everything, which will be fine. It'll be okay. All right. So I want to put that back there on the inside surface of that thigh and move that back. And even though I crunched a whole bunch of things that now need rewelding again, I like that placement better. That is just about where it needs to be. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so now that I've, re I've repositioned that leg where it wants to be, and I'm just, I'm looking at how this triangle works with this leg and how this triangle on the back side of the sculpture works over here. Cause I really like how these two triangles are kind of um, flowing in and out of each other. Um, lots of wonderful triangles created by the arm and the, and the back on one side and a big, huge wide open triangle created by the arm and the back on the other side. I, uh, as, as much as I like the sensuality of the figure, I'm also interested in some of these kind of abstract geometric ways that the figure plays in space. Um, so I'm looking at alignments of things, you know, how do the arms work kind of coming out of the back and the shoulders and where do they hit the table? And I'm just kind of looking for certain kind of placement and a certain sense of this piece to get a contemporary sculpture in a pose that is just different enough that maybe it hasn't been seen before, or at least, you know, quite in this way. And there's something about how these arms stretch out in the back in nice, straight, long, elongated, stretched arms, while these um, legs are all kind of um, folded up in the front and kind of folded up um, and kind of rolling around a, um, <laughs> a the, the hips, you know, in the middle, it's kind of, I hate to even go there. I, I'm not, <laughs> not, not really being a Nazi or a white supremacist. It's still sort of almost as kind of like half of a swastika or something, which I'm not interested in, but I'm just interested in that the geometric spinning of that form as viewed from the top. Anyway, shut up. James, because now's not the time to go there. Um, but that's not where I'm at anyway, politically or socially or anything. I'm going to go ahead and weld this now. And that's why, you know, I, I've uh, gotten um, spoiled by having all of these tools at my disposal and over the years having done things like created um, um, torch. Uh, torch holders so that I can um, hold my torch at an angle. You guys can't see it because it's off camera, but I've got this torch bottle in this um, section of pipe that's welded to this foot thing here so that the torch itself is presented out at an angle so that when I'm heating up my knife blade and a little bit of wax happens to drip off the knife it drips straight down onto the tabletop and it doesn't drip back into the barrel of the torch so i tried to design those things both for myself but also for the class so that i don't have a lot of people like uh, clogging up all of the torch heads on the tabletop it is the fifth week of the quarter some people would say it's midterm. I think midterm gets a little squishy deal here. Either the fifth or sixth week of the 10 week class, 10 week term is midterm. But I sure hope that you guys are doing okay with your midterm quizzes and exams if you have them. Do we have anybody who is suffering terribly about midterms right now? You wouldn't even tell me if you were. Nah, last term, sure. This term, no. No. Why? Because you don't have uh, 
hard weird science class right now, something that has incredible exams to sit for? Eh, I think my psychology class didn't even do a midterm this, this go around. Well, I'm sorry if you can't see what I'm doing. I am doing a lot of welding and I'm doing a lot of welding on the bottom side and on the, yeah, just seams and joints that are out of position. So you can't really see them, but I'm uh, making a few welds, a few well-placed welds so that this thing holds together just a little bit better. Also, now while all of that is trying to set up, I'm gonna come back down here. And so I've got little tiny hand forms that I've welded um, very delicately onto the little tiny wrist forms that are the transitions into the arms. And so I'm gonna to try to beef up those transitional points. I'll probably be carving them back down, but I'm taking little bits of wax and sticking them on there. And I'm going to take my hot knife, one, two, three, four, five seconds in the flame, and come down here and just touch it enough, again, to bring the wax up to fusion temperature and then have it freeze back down again. <coughs> I'm going to leave that for a second because it needs to sit. OK, I'm going to. I always like to turn off my gas and my flame whenever I'm not using it because you don't need to just send more carbon dioxide into the environment. And coming back to you guys. So let's see, I'm gonna flip my camera around here so I can see the talking head view and say hi. And then now that I'm looking at you guys and sort of addressing you, I'm open for questions or comments um, if you want to show your sculpture and say, hey, look at this great thing that I made huge progress on over the weekend, that would be cool. If you don't want to show your sculpture because you really haven't made much progress on it since last Wednesday, I understand. And so we'll try to get it going. Hey, Kylie, what's up? So I'm doing a sea turtle as a secondary because my kids like to destroy my stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah. How would you... Would you do like a like a whole body of a sea turtle and then kind of attach the shell to the top and attach a shell to the bottom? Almost like a dog splaying out type thing and then do try to fuse something to the top and the bottom to make it as a shell? Yeah, you can. Um, I mean, I, I always, you know, I try to get away from um, thinking of these things as as pieces of shell and I'm just always looking at it as a volume. You know, this is an oval shaped volume and it's curved on the top and it might be a little bit flatter, but it's still kind of curved on the bottom. And mm -hmm. I'm just gonna build it in the additive process with, with um, you know, softened wax. Okay. Um, usually I'll cut it out of one of those wax sheets so that I've got, you know, the, the gingerbread man version of the sea turtle and then build up the forms, both top and bottom, you know, expanding out the volumes to get okay. the, the, the shells. Because I notice, like on the pictures that I'm looking at, there's a void, obviously, where the turtle's head comes in and out of the shell. Yeah. So um, should I just build that up and then cut it away to allow the head to be erect? Yeah, I mean, you can get in there with the little pointy tool and you can just take a swipe out of that and make that that hollow looking place where the um, head or limbs come out of the shell. Um, but we do want that shell to be um, uh, solid in there. The, the bronze casting is gonna wind up being solid in there. So um, um, you can have a little bit of a cast shadow and a little bit of a cave going back in there, but then it pretty much has to be um, solid back there. And that, okay. that can usually be achieved with just that detail out at the edge. Okay. All right. Well, so, thank you. So See, far, I, I that was nice. <laughs> I like it when people want to talk and, you know, bounce an idea off of me or look for clarification. I will always give you way too much information, but, you know, we're here um, working together, sculpting cheek by jowl, as it were. <laughs> um, and so if anybody else has a question, 
or Kylie, if you have another question, I'm good. Nah, she ran away. Okay. <laughs> I'm still here. I figured I'd give someone else a chance to ask a question if they wanted to. Oh, that is cool. Um, you know, I'm keeping one eye on the world news about the pandemic and everything. And God, I mean, the news is so all over the place. Yes, we've got vaccines that are coming. And, you know, we may get vaccinated in the next three months or something. But now people are worrying about, of course, the mutations and whether they are going to be more virulent and or, you know, make it any more of a problem for us. I am always a glass half full kind of guy. And the glass is not half full of virus. I'm really thinking that, you know, we get through the cold and flu season here in the wintertime and get into springtime when the weather gets nice and people can get outdoors. Um, this virus does not do well outdoors. It doesn't transmit well outdoors. It really likes to only transmit indoors. It seems like that's what I've heard from news, from reputable news reports. And so I'm just hoping that we can get out ahead of any um, variants or mutations of it that want to spread faster or um, do us more harm. Um, many of us have things we want to do, um, you know, national things we want to go to in the summertime, um, uh, ball games and everything. Everybody would like to be able to go back to things. And we may get to half of the population vaccinated by summer and possibly three quarters of the, of the population or at least two thirds of the population vaccinated by fall. That's not quite herd immunity, uh, but it's getting really damn close. So we at the college are planning on face-to-face -face classes again in the fall. And we're gonna try to do some more face-to-face -face classes offered in the summertime. Um, so um, stay tuned because, you know, whenever we can take the uh, restrictions off, we will, we will make things available so that you guys can get back to normal again. Paula, Cassifer, oh my gosh, what do you guys want to talk about? Hi, uh, speaking of COVID, they released another press conference around nine hours ago. Um, it's on YouTube um, about the, uh, the vaccines and why it's best to get one when it rolls out instead of just waiting for um, the newest, latest, whatever. Uh, as long as you go and get the vaccine when you can, when it's established, um, you're already working on immunity for yourself and those around you um, versus, you know, waiting like three, four weeks to months um, with the possibility of spreading the virus and getting it yourself. Yeah, good points. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Are, are you um, are you studying EMT or nursing at all? Uh, I was in the nursing program and then I switched. So, yeah. Okay. Well, if you're you're speaking like for, like you're speaking from a public health perspective, and I really appreciate that. So, thank you for the insights. That's cool. No problem. Yeah. Let's see, Paula. Are you? Uh, did you want to say anything, or are you just wanting us to hear? <laughs> your grunts and groans as you're sculpting there in the background. That's my dog snoring. <laughs> he's, he's snoring across the room. You can hear him clear over here. Um, I was just wondering if any of you had seen where, I think it was, it was Dodger Stadium and they had people that were protesting and stopped people from going in and getting their shots for like 30 yeah. minutes after they'd like sat there forever. Uh, um, I heard about that. Yeah. It seems like they would have been charged with something like kidnapping because they were legally going somewhere they were allowed to go. They had no right to stop them and keep them from moving forward. They, yeah, it's similar they didn't to do anything to them. Nothing. It's kind of similar to those people in front of the abortion clinics. Yeah, but it's vaccines and it's their body. It's their choice. Yeah, um, same for those people to stop them from getting medical care and not get charged with something. I was kind of shocked. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little weird. A little weird and more upsetting but than I can express. It was LA. <laughs> <laughs> that is LA, right? Dodger Stadium? Yeah. Yeah, I get it mixed up. I'm not a baseball nut. Not in major leagues. It's not like, I don't know. 
We used to go watch the M's play once in a while, and that was fun. Well, you're a major league nut, but just not for baseball. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I couldn't <laughs> help it. You left the door open there anyway. Um, I admit it. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> um, for the most part, during this pandemic, we've been playing slow pitch softball from, you know, up by Washington down to the border. And there has not been one outbreak. And I'm talking like 12 person teams, 50 to 60 teams all in one area. And there hasn't been one outbreak in that kind of setting. That's well, good. Doors, and it's usually kind of this time, yeah. Well, I was always, ho I'm a, I do archery um, and shooting sports. And I was certainly hoping that they wouldn't be canceling all the events this summer because being outdoors, um, it just seems like transmission is so much less likely than being in a, in a closed indoor situation someplace. Um, I think everybody needs to get out and start doing stuff again, but especially if you're outdoors, um, you know, golfing or whatever it is that's an outdoor activity. Um, some people get really upset looking at other people on a jogging path or something without a mask, but gosh, you know, what they used to say in the 60s about the solution to pollution is dilution. And it's kind of the same thing with the virus. I mean, if you're outdoors, you know, it dissipates just as soon as it comes out of your mouth instead of being indoors and kind of hanging as that cloud of aerosol. Um, so do get outside, get some fresh air. You can even do it with your mask on if you stay six feet away from each other. Uh, I think that the CDC recently, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, they put out a mask mandate. So if you go outside, you do need to have a mask. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. I, th I thought that was just for public transportation I, and federal, thought that it was, federal property. I thought it was for um, if there's going to be people within six feet from you as well. Yeah, that yeah. too. That's the only time I have an issue is like here in Reedsport. We have like a 12 foot wide parking space on this side of the road. That's and nice. there's been a couple joggers come down the sidewalk and there's plenty of room for them to go this way or that way. And it's like, which way would you like to go? And they're, they just come as close to you as could be. Yeah. Jogging, breathing hard with no mask on. Way no, I not. stand corrected. That, that irritates right. me. Sorry. It's just rude. I think it's because of the whole Florida beaches, everybody's, you know, coughing on each other. They don't want to repeat that. Yeah. Well, they say that new, the new strains are hanging in the air longer. Yeah. Uh, the one from Africa, I think is the one that's kind of going all crazy. Um, it, the vaccine. Is it that or is it, is it because the air thing or is it because the, the it's a mutation of the vaccines? It's, it's a mutation. Yeah, I know it's a mutation. There's like three or four of them now. Um, the, I guess the efficacy of the uh, vaccines aren't as high with the, the variant from Africa, but um, it's still helpful against some of it. Um, yeah. The so it's a little video. bit of both then, a little bit both air and vaccine issues. Yeah. Um, if you watch the uh, the news conference that they recently released, it'll go into a lot more detail about all that. I haven't had time. It's midterms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My neighbors are probably liking not having to listen to the news. Because <laughs> <laughs> I like TiVo, and if I don't have time to do it, I just watch it on YouTube later. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. Sometimes earlier, PBS News Hour usually gets put up on YouTube at a good hour or two, I think, before it gets here on TV. God, I just told everybody what a geek I am. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Um... So completely off topic, though. Um, I got some color on my sleeve. Oh my hey. gosh. Yes, oh, flounder. Wow. What? <laughs> hey. Wait a minute. I got to pin that. I got, okay. Yo, and you've got Simba on your elbow. <gasps> yep. I have oh. Beauty and oh. the Beast. I mean, it's a whole 
90s Disney. beautiful so I basically love the color. my entire childhood is on your arm I love it my <laughs> entire childhood I love the little mermaid. <laughs> so I was really stoked that I was able to get some color on it because it's been like a sleeve I've had going for about a year and a half now and that's super cool I'm I'm pretty stoked about it I can't wait to have another five hour session of my arm getting fried <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh I can't do it anymore well, not to be rude, but as they say, when you do get older, your skin does not like that <laughs> doing. Probably not as good for you either, but yeah, no, I, I have I have artificial hips, so it's like uh, off the off the list with many other things. My mom is sixty four, and about five years ago, she had to stop getting tattoos because her skin was just so like friable and bleeding and stuff like that. So that would be mine because I'm thin skin anyways, fair skin and a lot of sun doesn't <laughs> would mix well. doesn't mix well at all. But yeah, she did color beautifully. I mean, it's, I guess uh, who, staring at it. Who do you see for tattoos? Um, I go to Lisa Johnson at Inspired Ink out of Coquille. Uh, mm -hmm. okay, and okay. um there's another person there named rusty he's also very very good thank you i will recommend them any day whatever happened to rusty savage out of eugene i've never had a tattoo in eugene yeah he had a shop there in eugene for years hmm. he's out on west west sixth street Hmm. Yeah, just between like the Y and Ferry Street Bridge. Okay. Dang, I got to go over there Thursday if anybody needs anything. Eugene? Eugene? Yeah, I got to go to Eugene. You must tell us why now. <laughs> what? You have to tell us why now. Oh, it's not anything exciting. I just have to go get a check on those hips. I got my ah. second hip replacement a couple of years ago, and I had an appointment this time last year, and it got canceled because of COVID. Oh. And I just am now getting around to it. Procrastination, Admiral. <laughs> <laughs> that and not having somebody that I know that I trust here to go through that with if, if something did need to be done. I have a doctor in Eugene that did my first one I really like. I have a lot of confidence in him. Good, good, good. That's always nice when you find someone that's what you're looking for. Well, he's at a Slocum too, Slocum Orthopedics. Oh, I was just up there. Who was it? Dr. Jewett, Brian Jewett, Jr. His dad's a doctor too. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's done like thousands of them. Mm. The only thing I don't like about him is he's a Ducks fan. <laughs> <laughs> Super Bowl is this weekend, isn't it? Is that this uh, weekend? Sunday, yep. Yes. I will be rooting for the Chiefs because I absolutely hate Tom Brady. So <laughs> good for you. <laughs> So in my basic design class, I assign everybody to watch the Super Bowl commercials so that we can talk about advertising, um, uh, Monday morning quarterbacking the advertising because, you know, the commercials are so famous and they're also kind of one-offs. Um, and it might not be quite as spectacular this year. I hope that they're still interesting and creative commercials. Um, but it gives us in, in design something to talk about in terms of advertising. Um, the use of themes and humor and, you know, whatever tech or whatever. I know my favorite Super Bowl commercial ever was the one that was, what was that? Puppy Monkey Baby? Puppy Monkey Baby? Do you guys remember that one? No. Okay. <laughs> was, it, was, it, was, it, was it Super Bowl Four? Oh. Oh, <laughs> ow, you're hurting me now. Yikes. Oh. Yikes. Oh. <laughs> You know, I was four years old in Super Bowl four, so you know. <sighs> Couldn't be passed up. You walked right into it. Ouch. You said you wanted us to talk more. <laughs> yeah. 
I uh, was on TikTok the other night and I was looking at this dad jokes thing. Oh, God. And <laughs> it said, mm-hmm. I tripped over my wife's bra. It was a booby trap. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you guys uh, seen the commercial for Alaskan Airlines, the uh, safety dance? Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. I'm going to go look that up real quick. <laughs> and then there was another one that says, milk is good, but it could be butter. <laughs> I really like the Super Bowl uh, commercials uh, with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, gosh. Those were entertaining. I heard Budweiser wasn't going to be doing a commercial slot this time. I kind of hope they're wrong because those are some of my favorites. Yeah, but you have to keep it mind those super bowl commercials like they cost millions of dollars i guarantee during quarantine people were still drinking budweiser yeah (laughs) (laughs) this is true (laughs) so i understand they've been drinking a lot more (laughs) right (laughs) there is another one that just like had me roll and it says my doctor told me I'm going deaf the news was hard for me to hear (laughs) there's a guy I work with that is always cracking dad jokes I was like you know I'm gonna come up with some mom jokes I said mom jokes are way better (laughs) that was definitely worth watching yeah (laughs) it's probably the best commercial i've seen in like that's related to covid ah somebody started it up Sure, thanks a lot, Cassifer. Now everybody's going to turn it on. I mean, it's not my fault. I put just the, like Put sharing. the link in the chat. Now I did. we'll have it playing on five <laughs> or ten screens here. It's best to know that you need to have a mask. And they're dancing and talking to you. <laughs> yeah. So, Okay. I'm a designer, I'm an artist, I'm, I'm interested in fashion and stuff. Why haven't masks taken off yet as a fashion statement? I thought they that have. by now they... people would be making cool ones. They do. And people would be wanting to wear cool ones and effective ones too. But we still have That's these nasty clothing. things that are just flat and they pull straight across your face and allow you to you know, have a sneak beak and everything else. And you'd think that we'd be at stage two or three of mask development by now. So there are clothing lines that actually have masks that come with like t-shirts and stuff. So they have them as accessories, which is really funny. Um, But you can go to like Redbubble or whatever and print your own like funny masks. Um, There's one with like Owen Wilson's face on it or uh, like half of, um, what's his name? Leonardo DiCaprio from when he was in Django. Oh. Like the meme face, it's it's on there, so. Ah, uh, okay. I actually want a Plague Doctor mask, but I don't know how well that will go over. Well, it it's big and heavy unless it's really lightweight, st- uh, what do you call that, uh, paper mache. Um, I suppose paper mache would work. Um, we have all kinds of issues as teachers and professors because if we're going to teach a class live and we have to wear a mask, then we feel like we're being muffled and we can't project or speak clearly. And I was always wondering if the um, uh, plague doctor mask um, would actually kind of work as a resonating chamber and maybe allow you, it, it's not sitting on your lips, so it doesn't muffle your speech, and you might actually be able to speak more clearly uh, through something like that. That would be awesome. <laughs> but then again, 
more when people look at that, they'll be reminded of the Black Plague. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they'll take masks seriously. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but you know, I've been hoping that um, the ma- the designers for menswear as well as women's designers would be coming out with masks that were coordinated with the suit, so that you know Nancy Pelosi does not have to wear these stupid masks that don't match her outfit anymore. Most mm-hmm. people who have to go to work as a professional and wear a uniform or a suit or something, you know, wouldn't it be nice if you had the same kind of, you know, wool material for your mask that was, you know, like your blue or gray wool suit. Um, or even make it match your tie. Yeah, I mean, these things should be coordinated, damn it. We've been doing this for nine months now. We should, we should know how to do <laughs> this. <clears throat> you guys on the baseball team, your masks should be coordinated with your uniforms. Uh, I mean, hopefully they match. So that when you go play games, that is looking like a sweet gorilla, dude. Are you holding up the gorilla? Hunter, are you, have you got that gorilla? Go- no, uh, Cameron. No. Oh, uh, my God. Harambe would be proud of you. Uh, that is an awesome that, gorilla. <clears throat> it's also, it's going to be, it's going to be heavy. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you have like a kitchen scale or something that you can put it on, but um, wax is one-tenth the density of bronze. So you can multiply the weight by 10 to get right. what your bronze weight is going to be. And then you have to multiply that by eight to find out the dollar amount that that bronze is going to cost. So basically you have to take that weight times 80 is how much, how many dollars it's going to cost you. Be right, careful. Give me, a little, give me some time to accept the, uh, the price a little bit, you know, get that panic attack out of the way, you know. <laughs> you could always hollow it out from the butt and then put a lid on the bottom of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hide a key or something. <laughs> yeah, you could you could cut the back off and hollow it out from the back and then make a little door on the back. Or I can weld the back plate on um, in post-production and make it go away and you could have a, a, a hollow piece. So that's a possibility of cutting, cutting a, a section of it off, being able to hollow out the internals and uh, I can cast it in two pieces and then weld it back together. I do have that capability. I, uh, we have a scale here, so I'll do it later after class to see how much it's gonna be. Then I'll uh, kind of determine what I'll do from there. Okay. Let's see. So let's see, on Wednesday night, we should probably be um, ready to um, uh, exchange our um, Super Bowl uh, snack recipes so uh if you guys have seven layer bean dip (laughs) that's a lot okay i i used to make a big damn sandwich and i i don't i can't even do that anymore jalapeno popper dip i think i got beat ultimate nachos is also very fun I'm going to change my camera back to the side view if anybody's actually interested in sculpting. Um, What's that? Oh, I'm not doing it up there. I'm doing it down here. All right. So if I can bring this in tight and so I'm making the sculpture and it's getting better a little bit at a time. We, uh, in the daytime sculpture class, we finally were able to hire a model and now we are meeting together in person as a class and sculpting from a model in our class. Yay. And it was so exciting that um, <clears throat> the publicity person from the college came over and took some pictures of us. The model was not in the shot, but um, she wanted to see actual students in a real class we all had masks on. We all had sneeze guards between our workstations. We were all six feet or more apart. But it is a little nerve wracking to be doing <clears throat> an in-person class in the middle of a pandemic. Mm-hmm. 
I went up to Philomath over the weekend and picked up that motorcycle that I bought two weeks ago and hey. took it straight to the Ducati dealer in Portland because it's got a lot of shit that's wrong with it. <laughs> mm. well, that sucks. No, that's a Ducati. Um, unfortunately, great design, um, not great engineering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Will you do me a favor? Put that in there. I'm probably going to have to let go. Thank you. So I have to tell you guys, you know, I have to confess that, you know, I will sculpt with you guys on camera here, and then I won't touch my darn sculpture until next time either. And so it's not working out for me either, this sculpting thing about trying to do it on your own. I know this is hard. Um, and maybe we just do need to be together for, I don't know, three hours on a Zoom, yuck. But um, we got to kind of wrap these things up this week or next. And uh, it looks like some of you are getting there, which is good. Um, I want to invite anybody who is getting a sculpture or sculptures finished up to bring them in. Um, God, I got to figure out a good time for this. Um, because then I can be doing um, gating systems and I can be doing that as an online demonstration during class next week. Um, I, you know, I'm kind of going to want you to bring in the whole mess, um, you know, the wax, the box, the lamp, mm -hmm. the tools, and then of course your sculpture. Um, and if you wanted to bring in a sculpture early, but then keep on sculpting for another week or two, and do a secondary piece, maybe something cute and small, maybe a couple cute and small things to give away as gifts. You know, you're sure welcome to do that because the smaller pieces, you know, will only cost a dollar or two in bronze to do something that's medallion sized. Mm. And so, you know, you could do small medallion sized pieces um, and they can be quite lovely. And sometimes when the, when the um, pressure is off, when you've already done your big, you know, um, opus, um, magnum opus piece for the class and the pressure's off, sometimes the sculpting is easier on the second and third one. Uh, is there any time either tomorrow or Wednesday that I can bring mine in? Yes, yes. And you know what? You can just bring it in and, and leave it on that table. That table becomes a really good um, just way of us to communicate, even if I'm not here, because I visit it several times a day and I bring the pieces in um, and rescue them. Nothing stays out overnight. By the time evening falls and 5.30 or 6 rolls around, I'm coming and I'm bringing everything off of that table in the evenings. So, um, but those of you who are working during the daytime, you know, the only time you can get over here is after five. And I, I can appreciate that. <clears throat> but you know, I can, I can bring in stuff at any point. If you bring it over on a set on a Friday, I can get it um, off the table because I'm here teaching other classes on Fridays. God, you know what I need to do for this class that I, I haven't even thought of it yet because I'm so used to this just being, um, you know, this format of everybody just sculpt and y'all have fun sculpting. But I should probably write up a um, an assignment in coursework that is the wax uh, pattern for this sculpture, so that you can photograph your piece with your cell phone and email the photograph to yourself, so that you can upload it as a JPEG photograph into coursework. And then I can give you some points. I can give you a half a grade or something for the first five weeks of the quarter so that we've got something in the can, you know, as a midterm type of a grade. Um, I'm going to write a note to myself so that I remember to do that. And then I'll go ahead and, and make a, an assignment in coursework that is just the, um, the wax 
sculpture for this part of the class. That way you've got something. Um, at the end of the class, then it'll be nice to, you know, cast the bronze, finish the bronze, and then take a picture of it with your cell phone, and then please upload it at the end of the class so that I can give you a final grade and we're, we're good to go. Um, oh, there's all kinds of mics unmuted. Does anybody else have a question for me? So I started this turtle, like, right when I sat down at the computer. Yes. And it's already done already. No, it's a... It's a turtle sandwich. It's beautiful. Yep. It looks good. Uh, I'll fill in the gaps, but I wanted to get a kind of overall view of how it was going to shape out. I think the proportions are wonderful. Uh, you know, the bigger flippers in front are working. And when you can um, carve that shell down into, you know, rounded forms instead of squared off, you'll be good mm -hmm. to go. You'll be golden. Sweet. That's good. good job. Now, just to keep it from my kids. <laughs> Hide it in the freezer. Oh, dude, that's where we keep the popsicles. They're going to know. <laughs> uh, duct tape them to the ceiling. You know, I thought about it. <laughs> like, I have five kids, y'all. Oh, five. gosh. Yeah. I have two. Put <laughs> it behind the frozen broccoli. Ugh. There you go. There you go. That is oh. a that is an idea. I don't idea. use frozen broccoli. Oh shit! <laughs> I'm the, I'm the fresh person. I like the fresh stuff. Okay, so I can detach my. Any questions? Do your kids ever stop eating? Because like mine never do. Like oh my no. god! Like how nope. do they not? Nope, it's constant. I yeah, spend oh, at least sixteen hundred dollars a month in food. That's what it feels oh. like. Yeah, no, no, I, I budget for it. No, I, I believe you. <laughs> that is definitely what I spend. <laughs> so, I just found out I'm actually about to have a third one. So, uh, yeah, oh, this is going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Like, uh, I don't want to scare you, but if you don't have a hell child yet, it's going to be the third one. Oh, no, my first one is that, like, she's back at the door pounding already. Like, right now it's <laughs> quiet, so she must be winging under the door looking underneath the crack or something, you know? <laughs> Minor 11, 7, 6, 5, and will be 3 on the 10th. Oh, wow. Yeah, only, uh, let's see, she's gonna be three in March, and then I have a one year, a little over one year old. So yeah, they're about the same age as yours will be. Welcome to the March. seven, six, and five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, I was working on my sculpture, and I was trying to soften my wax, and I put my heat lamp just over top of it just like a nice puddle of wax because I forgot about it. I'm having so much fun. I never want this pandemic to end. <laughs> that Just was like, dripping with sarcasm. I felt it. Try that one out and see what how it would land. <clears throat> <laughs> Smoothly.
Was there that ghost behind you? No, I thought I heard one of my kids hit the floor. You know that random. Yeah. Uh, no, I got I got PTSD from my daughter. Like I can't. If there's silence, like I'm looking for her. My five and six year old are girls. They like to cut each other's hair. Yeah. Lost my shit. <laughs> like mullets, guys. Mullets. Oh. Came back the nineties. Oh gosh. I... Business in front, party in back. <laughs> you guys are gonna party in your room for a few weeks as you grounded. <laughs> It was bad. It was bad. Any of you folks with kids in the K through 12 system looking at um, classes restarting anytime soon? Myrtle Point yeah. actually has theirs going. I'm, uh, I'm probably not going to uh, let mine do that at the moment just because there's new variants and stuff i don't know how all that's going um mortal point has a pretty good system they have it to where uh, nobody intersects with another class and my youngest daughter had someone in her class test positive so they only had to quarantine that class because there was no tracing of other classes coming into contact with that class so it worked that's out nice. really well it worked out really well yeah, North Bend High School is looking at having people be in a uh, cohort, staying in, and the kids would stay in the classroom and the teachers would come in and out uh, uh, for four different classes for a half a day. And then all those kids would leave, but they would only be in their one class cohort, taking the same four classes uh, all together. They're hoping that that's going to work. As long as they don't move around a whole lot, it shouldn't be too big of an issue, but you know how kids are and not really wanting to clean things, so I don't know. I try to put hand sanitizer on my kids, and she goes up and licks handrails and shit, so like, kids are, <laughs> no, they don't care. Mine like to lick the bottom of their shoe. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, you can do all you want, but kids are going to just screw it all up. <laughs> I was like, you know, th this is why I don't drink or eat after you guys. <laughs> Going around licking shoes. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to have to get off here. I gotta go to the gym. It's okay. I was well, gonna call fun. it a night. It's it's been an hour. Nobody wants to see this recording ever again, but uh, you really don't want to look at a <laughs> two or three hour recording. So we've made some progress. We've touched base with each other. Um, you've had, you've had, you know, your, your moment of, uh, Zen with me and what a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> we will try to make progress with this and see you again on Wednesday and uh, good luck with the sculpting until then. Don't hesitate to ask me anything. Um, anybody else, anything for the good of the order before we take off? No. All right. Well, I'm going to hit the end button here. So I will see you guys on Wednesday night. Thanks a Bye lot. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.